Here's what I do after she lays eggs. The first thing I'll do is I'll mark the tops of all the eggs with an X so I know which way is up in case the eggs accidentally roll during incubation. This clutch was small. There was only five eggs and one of those eggs was a slug. The slug will likely grow mold during incubation, so I'm going to remove it. Ball python eggs usually stick together. They could be separated, but you have to do so very slowly and carefully. It looks like I was successful, but I'll keep an eye on that spot. Now these eggs are off to my egg box. I use a combination of vermiculite, perlite, and water as a substrate. This keeps the humidity really high, which is critical for the survival of the eggs. I'll also cover the eggs with plastic wrap to ensure that humidity gets locked inside the egg box. And then they get put in my incubator. Now I give the mother a nice soap. This allows her to rehydrate, get the smell of eggs off of her, and just generally clean up after laying eggs. I find that this helps get her eating again. Snakes often go off food when they're gravid. She hasn't eaten in three months, so I'm hoping this soak helps. The next thing we're gonna do is weigh her. Before I started pairing her, she weighed about 1800 grams. And now she's down to about 1400 grams. So now we focus on getting her back up to a healthy weight. My ball python just laid these eggs and now I'm going to candle them to make sure that the eggs are good. The main thing I'm looking for is the presence of veins. These two eggs look good, but this one, this one looks upside down, which could be big trouble for the egg. The fourth egg looks good. In order to save this egg, I'm going to have to remove it from the clutch and rotate it so the embryo is on the top. If the embryo remains on the bottom of the egg, the weight of the yolk will crush or drown it. These eggs stick together, so I have to be very careful not to tear the egg when I'm pulling them apart. But I have to get them apart, and I have to get that embryo properly positioned. I'm hoping I found it in time and the damage isn't already done. I successfully removed the egg, and now it's time to find that embryo again. When I candle the egg, you can see that the embryo is totally upside down. This egg definitely would have went bad if we didn't catch this. I located the embryo again and now I'm gonna mark this side with an X. Now all we could do is hope that we caught it in time and this egg makes it through incubation. I'll keep you posted on how this egg is doing and hopefully in 55 to 60 days we have some new baby snakes. These ball python eggs are on day 18 of incubation. In a previous video, I showed how this egg was laid upside down. Which can be fatal for the embryo. So I removed it from the clutch and I turned it so the embryo was face up. And it looks like we made the right choice because this egg is showing no signs of going bad. Even the spot where we separated the eggs looks good. There's no signs of tears or leaking. I'm going to get these eggs back in the incubator. These ball python eggs are on day 43 of incubation. And the one egg that we had to remove from the clutch to turn it right side up is looking really good. With about two weeks until they hatch, I'm going to candle them one more time. Candling the eggs this late in incubation, you should start to see the bottom of the egg get thicker and darker. And did you catch that? We even have a little bit of movement, which is a great sign. It means the snake is developing and even responding to the flashlight touching the egg. The developing snake is sitting at the bottom of the egg. And at this stage of incubation, it's pretty well developed. So now that it developed organs, skin, and bones, the light is not going to pass through the bottom of the egg as easily anymore. So the bottom of the egg is going to appear much darker than it did early on in incubation. And sometimes that network of veins that we see at the top of the egg will thin out a little bit. But we should still see some strong veins. All of these eggs candled really well, and the eggs are still nice and plump, which means they have enough humidity. This clutch has the potential to produce some pretty amazing looking snakes, and we should find out in about two weeks. These ball python eggs are on day 56 of incubation. You can see that the eggs are significantly denting in now and the shell is getting thin, which is exactly what we want to see at this point in incubation. The eggs also separate really easily right now. It's not necessary to separate them, but I wanted to show you some of the changes that the eggs are going through. Another big change is when you candle the egg, it's much darker inside. In fact, a lot of it you're not even going to be able to see through. Because at this point in incubation, the snake is fully developed. So the light can't pass through the skins and bones and organs of the snake. So I don't see any issues with these snakes, and it looks like we're on track for them to hatch any day now. We should have some beautiful snakes in this clutch, so stick around to see them hatch. These ball python eggs are on day 58 of incubation and they're starting to hatch. And it looks like three of them already pipped. If you remember, this clutch had one egg that was laid upside down, meaning the embryo was on the bottom of the egg instead of the top. If we didn't reposition the egg, the embryo may have died. But so far, it looks like everyone has made it. This one pipped, but it didn't poke its head out yet. So I'm going to open the egg up a little bit more so I could check on the snake. It's fully developed and it pipped on its own, so cutting the egg open a little bit more 
won't have any impact on the snake's development at all. Now that the egg is open a little more, I could check for deformities or any other issues. And I don't see any. This looks like a happy, healthy snake. Out of the four eggs, there's still one that hasn't hatched yet. Since the other three eggs already hatched, I expect this one to hatch really soon. This is the egg that was laid upside down, and it appears to be really healthy, so I think we made the right choice on repositioning that egg. We'll get these little ones back in the incubator and wait for that fourth egg to pip. And I'll update you soon. These ball python eggs are on day 59 of incubation, and two of the four are out of their eggs. This is the upside down egg clutch, and these two snakes look absolutely beautiful. Just have a look at the amazing colors on these snakes. That's one of the things that makes ball pythons so popular as pets. They literally come in thousands of different color and pattern combinations. But in addition to that variety, they are one of the most sweetest snakes that you'll ever come across, especially if you handle and work with them regularly from a young age. Most of them are very docile and they don't get very large. Now that they're all cleaned up, I'm gonna put them on a damp paper towel and then I'll put them back inside of the incubator. This will keep them nice and warm and humid until they have their first shed. And I can't wait to see these guys after their first shed because that's when their colors really pop. There are two more snakes in this clutch that still need to crawl out of their eggs. And I have a feeling they're going to be just as nice as the other two. It usually takes about a day or so for them to crawl out. So I'll get these guys back in the incubator and I'll check up on them tomorrow. These ball python eggs are on day 60 of incubation and the last two are out of their eggs. We got two more really nice looking snakes, but even more importantly, they look really healthy. This one looks like it's an inchy firefly, which is a combination of three genes that brightens the color and really cleans up the pattern. And this little one looks like it's one of my favorite darker morphs, the GHI. GHI stands for gotta have it. The gene gives the snake a really dark background that's contrasted by a brighter, irregular, drawn out pattern. After they crawl out of the egg, I'll give them a rinse to get all the dried up egg goop and the egg box substrate off of them. When rinsing the snake, I always ensure that the water is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that they're rinsed, I'll put them with their other clutch mates. The mother of this clutch was a pastel Mojave Enchi, and the father was a GHI Firefly. So you can see here that we got a little bit of everything from the parents in this clutch. It looks like we ended up with two GHIs, a fire Enchi Pastel, and a Firefly Mojave. Now we just keep them warm and humid and wait for them to shed. These ball pythons hatched six days ago and today they had their first shed. This one is an Enchi Firefly and it looks amazing. I love that clean yellow pattern on that dark background. And it even has some real nice flamings up the side. The next two have some really neat drawn out stretched looking patterns. They're very abstract looking. It almost reminds me of the melting clocks from the Salvador Dali paintings. And it looks really nice on that dark background. And they get that look from the GHI gene. These two are beautiful, especially for those who like darker snakes. And this last one is a Firefly Mojave. And it is stunning. It's got shades of yellows and browns and blushing throughout and I absolutely love that squiggly pattern. This little one might be one of my holdbacks this year, but we'll have to see what else hatches out. I wish I could keep them all, but I can't. So overall, this was a great clutch. The snakes are beautiful, and even more importantly, they're all healthy. And now that they all shed, it's time to separate them into their own enclosures and get ready to offer them their first meal.